My name is Jason Londo, and I'm a research geneticist with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, specifically with the Grapevine Genetics Research Unit here in Geneva, New York. With Vitasgen, I focus on cold hardiness and low temperature response and how cultivated and wild grapevines survive the winter. Grapevines prepare for winter by initiating a process of dormancy that starts in the fall. The grapevine pays attention to the length of the day, and as the days get shorter, it's a signal to start shutting down from producing new material into a state of storage. After the vine ripens off, the vine has the complex task of making it through winter and figuring out when it's safe to break dormancy and break bud. It does this through the chilling requirement. And the chilling requirement is a complex biological clock. We don't really know what controls it, but somehow the vine is able to measure the amount of time that it spends within a certain temperature range all through the winter. And when that clock makes it all the way to say midnight, the buds are ready to burst. So it's very important for the grape to accurately measure the winter so that it's not ready to burst too early in the year. Here in the north, that's not usually a problem because the temperatures are so brutal in midwinter that even if the clock is satisfied, the vine can't grow. It becomes a bigger problem when we talk about climate change because as winters get warmer, the clock is active for more time. So the buds are readier earlier and earlier. If we have a very early warm spring, we can still have a late spring cold snap. And once the vines come out of dormancy and break bud, they're very vulnerable. In Vitasgen, we can measure chilling requirement and dormancy requirement by collecting canes from the field and then putting them into growth chambers where it's safe to grow. And so if we collect the material throughout the winter, we can get an idea of how much chilling is required for each variety. What we do special in Vitasgen is we can do this with mapping populations. So we can collect from a whole collection of progeny put them in the same condition and watch how fast they grow. If you use a parent that takes a long time to get through winter versus a parent that takes a short time to get through winter and you cross them, you're hoping to find progeny that segregate for that trait. Because low temperature response is an adaptive response to the environment, it's very unlikely that there's a major gene that controls it. That is what we all hope for, a gene that conveys the most amount of variation. And that way we would be able to help grapevine breeders out by showing them which genes to include in their populations. However, it's much more likely that there are lots of genes all interconnected and interacting in order to get you through the winter. For example, you would need genes that sense the light in the fall, genes that sense the cold in the early winter, the dormancy genes to keep you under while the clock is running, and then the bud burst genes in the spring. And they all have to network together in order to function. Because climate change has the possibility to impact our winters, it's important that we plant the right kind of varieties in each region. As the winters get warmer and bud burst advances, it puts our current cultivars at risk from early frost events. In order to get around the changing climate, grapevine breeders can start breeding for varieties that have longer delays in bud burst in order to get past those early spring frosts. The research on cold response that we're doing in Vitasgen is important for grapevine breeders because we're doing something with mapping populations that's just not possible for the average grapevine breeder. The logistics of measuring all these traits and seeing which varieties do best under which conditions is very difficult. Through Vitasgen, we have breeders collecting material and shipping it all to one site so that we can process everything under the same conditions. And you can't do this anywhere else in the country. So the data that we're collecting on low temperature response in Vitasgen can help people already established in the industry, as well as people who are interested in getting into grapevine. My name is John Toole, and I've been with the University of Minnesota's grape breeding program since 2005. I am the vineyard manager out here, so I am lucky enough to get to take care of around roughly 10 acres of research vineyards. And I also have my own vineyard in central Minnesota with my parents, where I'm also learning a lot of how these varieties perform in our cold climate. As a grower in Minnesota, definitely one of our largest, biggest challenges is the cold that we have to deal with. The cold damage that we experience on the grapes can happen in a number of ways. There's certainly uh, cold damage that happens in the deep of the winter, but then there's also damage that can occur basically on the bookends of the season. You can have these damaging colds coming in when you still have green material on the vine. The late spring frost damage is, is a pretty bad scenario for any grape grower in the Midwest. And I'm, I'm extremely excited about the Vitasgen programs, what it can offer us, first of all, as researchers at the university, but then secondly, as a grower myself, I'm, I'm excited about new varieties that have very high quality fruit traits that we're looking for. Also, 
more disease resistance, I am all for that. So if through VitusGen we can fast track ourselves to getting to toward those types of grapes that have the resistances that we're looking for much faster, and these are of same quality or better quality fruit for wineries, this is, this is definitely going to be a big boon for the whole industry. My name is Steve Zeller and I'm the winemaker and the co-owner of Parley Lake Winery. Uh, we are located about 25 miles from Minneapolis St. Paul, just five miles from the Horticultural Research Center at uh, the University of Minnesota. The breeding programs at the University of Minnesota and other related institutes is unbelievably important to me as a winemaker in our enterprise. I would not be in this business without it. We started 11 years ago planting grapes because there were a few new varieties that were released. Before that, we perceived there only to be a few that made decent wine. So without those great varietals, we would not be in business. We would not have, the, I think, the ability to make the wines that we make, and we wouldn't have the public perception that we're moving up in quality of wine in our region. I think programs like the Vitus Gin Project would really accelerate perhaps the efforts that have been going on in the past in terms of the breeding efforts. And for me as a, a winery owner and a winemaker, perhaps uh, even uh, make me more excited, which is hard to believe about all these great varietals.